Greetings to everyone. I am Dr. Jill Virja, Radiology Residents uh, in the Krishna Institute. Today I will be present the paper about the role of sonography in evaluating of rib lesions under the guidance of uh, Dr. Prakash Patil and the Dr. Asif Tampoli. Uh, the aim of this study is to discuss the usefulness of the ultrasonography in the diagnosis of rib lesions. The sonography helps in the evaluation of various costal and the control defects such as trauma, degenerative lesions, subluxation of the sternoclavicular joints, and the inflammatory lesions of the various etiology and location. The ultrasound, due to its different acoustic impedance between the soft tissue and the bone cortex, only allows the evaluation of the bone surfaces. So ultrasonography can be useful in the evaluation of the several bone disorders affecting the ribs as a result of its topographic capability and its high definition. The aim and objective of this study to evaluate the diagnostic role of ultrasonography in differentiating and the detection of the rib lesions. The total number of 16 patients were evaluated with the suspected and unsuspected rib lesions in the radiology department of the Krishna Institute. The patients were examined on the Vipro GE logic P9 color Doppler system with the high frequency linear error probe. The ultrasonography was done along the longitudinal and the transverse axis with the help of high frequency probe after clinically evaluating the patient's chief complaint and the site of lesion. The first case of about the rib fractures, the ultrasonographic hallmark of the fracture is the localized interruption of the hyperechoic line, which is correspond to the outer, cortex, outer, outer bone cortex. The ultrasonography is useful in rebuilding the rib fractures because it is prompt and easy to perform since it's focused on the painful areas. The associated finding with the rib fractures in the periosteum is a periosteal hematoma formation. In the soft tissue, there is a hematoma formation, edema, bursitis, and in the joints, there is a intraarticular fractures and the loose bodies. On the left side, the diagnostic ultrasonography in the longitudinal plan of the rib during the maximum inhalation demonstrate the cortical disruption, which I demonstrate by the white arrow with the posterior acoustic shadow visible uh, deep to its posterior, uh, posterior border, which give the appearance like a lighthouse. So it's known as lighthouse or chimney phenomena and overlying hypoechoic area, which I demonstrate by the red arrow, which suggests a hematoma formation, uh, which is displacing the overlying pectoralis major and pectoralis minor muscles. Uh, in this case, a patient came with a complaint of breathlessness as a history of chronic cough since three years. On the radiography of the chair, shows evidence of fracture. On the ultrasonography, <coughs> so on the radiography, there is no evidence of fracture. So uh, after that, we uh, do ultrasonography of chest. The, there is a cortical uh, disruption uh, with the overlying, uh, overlying hyperechoic area, which I demonstrated by the red dotted line, suggests a callus formation. So there is a, there, so clearly visible uh, cortical, uh, cortical break, which suggests a rib fracture, uh, which is clearly seen on the zoomed out image. Uh, ultrasonography in, uh, in, the, uh, in this image, the ultrasonography in longitudinal plan of rib demonstrate in the image A, there is a cortical disruption with overriding of fracture fragment, which is clearly visible on the zoomed out image demonstrated by the uh, uh, yellow arrow and overlying hypoechoic area, which demonstrates a hematoma formation, which is displacing the pectoralis minor and major muscles. And in the image B, we can depict the normal rib, which shows a continuous, uh, continuous bony cortex, which is demonstrated by the arrow. Uh, osteomyelitis is an infection of the bone involving the medullary cavity, uh, which is a uh, typically caused uh, and the generally caused by the bacteria. The most common organism is a Cephalococcus aureus. Uh, it's occur at any age, but the most common age group is to, uh, between uh, 2 to 12 years. The sonography is not only a more sensitive than radiography in evaluating the metaphyseal bony lesion, but it's also useful in assessing the concomitant joint and epiphyseal involvement of the acute osteomyelitis in the infants. The color Doppler study shows increased vascular, vascular flow within and around the peri affected periosteum in which subperiosteal abscess has been developed in the follow of serial uh, sonography. So sonography is therefore useful in establishing the diagnosis of acute osteomyelitis and its complication before the radiographic changes are seen. So on the sonographic finding in the osteomyelitis are the deep soft tissue swelling, 
periosteal thickening and elevation, uh, subperiosteal abscess formation, cortical erosion, increase the vascularity within and around the periosteum, and the sinus trick formation. Uh, the image A and B of the color Doppler study and the spectral study shows increased vascularity around the periosteum, which suggests an inflammatory reaction, uh, the signs of evolving abscess. So, which is suggest a uh, uh, abscess formation. So, we can diagnose uh, before the abscess formation of the acute myelitis in the ultrasonography, which is not seen uh, in the plain uh, radiograph. On the left side, the ultrasonography shows a cortical erosion and the periosteal thickening, which are demonstrated by the yellow arrow with the subperiosteal uh, ecogenic, uh, ecogenic collection, which is denoting the subperiosteal abscess formation, with, uh, which is uh, demonstrated by the yellow dotted line. So this is a case of the acute osteomyelitis. And uh, in the right side, ultrasonography of the sixth strip shows a cortical break with the surrounding soft tissue swelling which I demonstrated by the yellow arrow. So cortical break, it is, it is suggestive of the cloaca formation, which suggests a, a chronic a chronic osteomyelitis. So on the left side, there is an axial and longitudinal section of the ultrasonography shows a periosteal thickening and elevation, which I demonstrated by the red arrow uh, with the subperiosteal uh, hypoechoic, heteroechoic, pyramidally hypoechoic collection, which suggests a abscess formation. And on the right side, there is an axial and longitudinal section of the ultrasonography shows a cortical irregularity with the adjacent hypoechoic area collection noted by the, uh, so this is a dotted red line mentioned uh, in the in this right picture shows abscess formation. Uh, so in this case, the uh, in the image A, the longitudinal section of the seventh rib on the right side shows area of cortical, uh, cortical erosion with the posterior acoustic uh, shadow and the loose body uh, in the center of the red circle, demo, uh, which, which is demonstrated in the image A, where in the image B and C, in the axial and longitudinal section, shows a periosteal irregularity and adjacent thickening with the cortical break, uh, which is demonstrated by the red arrow, and the surrounding hypoechoic collection, uh, which suggests uh, abscess formation, which I demonstrated by the yellow arrow. The image D, uh, in, the, uh, in the image D, the caliper shows a margin of collection uh, and the hyperechoic plex is in the center of the circle, uh, which demonstrated uh, in the corner, left corner, are due to the displacing the clips of the cholecystectomy and the sequestration, which give a tiny acometal artifact below. So this is a case of chronic osteomyelitis because the sequestration formation is there uh, in the seventh rib on the right side in the 16 year old uh, post collex cystectomy male patient who present with the pain in the right uh, hypochondrium. The upper image shows uh, in the axial and longitudinal section of ultrasonography shows a periosteal thickening and elevation with subperiosteal fluid collection. This is a hypoechoic area suggests a fluid collection which suggests a abscess formation periosteal abscess formation and in this uh, in this below uh, below image the longitudinal section of ultrasonography shows a hypoechoic a hypoechoic subperiosteal collection these all areas are the collection which suggests abscess formation which is extending into intramuscular and the subcutaneous plan through the sinus trick so this hyper uh, the hypoechoic line demonstrated here this is a sinus trick which connect the intramuscular to subcutaneous plan uh, through which the abscess uh, extending to the subcutaneous plan Uh, lipoma. Uh, the lipoma is a, a benign tumor composed of the major adipo uh, uh, composed of the major uh, adipocytes, and uh, uh, which is typically found in the subcutaneous plan, but is also found in the intramuscular plan. On the ultrasonography, it is a it is a present as a soft and variably ecogenicity like hypoechoic, isoechoic, or hyperechoic, and shows no acoustic shadow, and shows a minimal vascularity or no vascularity on the color Doppler study. So in this case, a patient uh, with the complaint of non-tender chest wall, uh, non-tender uh, non chest wall mass over the right side since two years. So oblique and longitudinal section of ultrasonography shows a well-defined, uh, well-defined, uh, well-defined encapsulated mass, uh, which is identical uh, to the uh, fat at the site of swelling, which is pointed, uh, which is pointed by the patient. It is in the anterior chest wall uh, muscles deep to the subcutaneous fat, and it appears as a hyperechoic uh, to overline subcutaneous fat with the presence of ecogenic line within. 
the lesion shows a mild compressibility and there is a no calcification cystic changes and the vascularity of the uh, in the lesion so these all are features suggestive of chest wall uh, lipoma uh, osteochondroma uh, the osteochondroma is a benign uh, benign bone tumor uh, there are the uh, there are the they are mostly asymptomatic and very low malignant potential and the osteochondroma osteochondroma can be either as a sessile and pedunculated which is arising from the metaph uh, metaphysis metaphysic region which is projecting away from the epiphysis so uh, osteochondroma has a hyaline cartilage cartilaginous gap and the medullary medullary cortex which is uh, continuous with the parent bone so on the ultrasonography, it is uh, able to demonstrate a cartilaginous cap very accurately as a hypoechoic, uh, hypoechoic region, which is bounded by the bone uh, on its deep and the uh, muscles and fat uh, superficially. So in uh, in this case, 18 year old patient can be the complaint of painless hard lump on the anterior chest wall on the right side and has a, no history of trauma. The longitudinal and the oblique section of the ultrasonography shows a bony overgrowth over the anterior aspect of fourth rib, and uh, it is uh, covered with the uh, covered with the thin hypoechoic cartilage, uh, which is measuring up to uh, 2.4 mm in thickness, and the lesion is seen displacing the uh, superficial muscles. And there is a no fracture or local fluid collection. So these all these features are suggestive of osteochondroma. Uh, in this case, the axial section of ultrasonography shows there is a fusion of right six and seventh rib, which are demonstrated by the red arrow, uh, which is linked together by the hyperechoic structure uh, in the proximal part, which is a uh, osseous material, and the hypo hypo to anechoic uh, structure, which is in the distal part which suggests a, cartil a cartilaginous, uh, which is cartilaginous material. So there is a fusion of six and seven three, and the longitudinal section of this same area shows a hyperechoic and hypoechoic structure seen between the six and seven three on the right side. Uh, so these all are features suggestive of synchondrosis, and uh, this is an accidental finding on the USD, ch uh, USD uh, chest, uh, and uh, there is a case of congenital synchondrosis. Uh, in this case, a 65-year-old man uh, came with the complaint of chest pain and breathlessness. The patient was advised to USD uh, sono uh, uh, sonography chest for the further evaluation. On the sonography, the accidentally, there is an expensile uh, heteroechoic, uh, which is demonstrated by the yellow arrow, involving the, uh, involving the posterior aspect of the fifth rib on the left side, with the underlying bone destruction, which is demonstrated by the red, yellow, red arrow. And involvement of the uh, left trapezius muscles, uh, which demonstrated on the right side. So later on, the patient was subjected to CCT, uh, CCT thorax, uh, and uh, lung carcinoma with the metast uh, bone metastatic was diagnosed. So this is a case of rib metastasis, which I demonst uh, which is uh, this is a, a sonographical findings of the rib metastatic lesion. There is a heteroechoic areas with the increased uh, surrounding vascularity. Uh, in this case, a 25-year-old woman underwent uh, ultrasound, uh, ultrasound examination for a non-tender palpable mass in the anterior, uh, in the anterior, uh, anterior uh, lateral aspect of the chest wall on the left side. On the ultrasonography, there is an expensile hypoechoic medullary lesion, which I demonstrated by the red arrow, with a thin rim of echogenicity, which is demonstrated by the yellow arrow surrounding the mass, uh, presumed to be a thin cell wall of bone which appears irregular without adjacent soft tissue mass. No evidence of calcification within the lesion. And on the uh, color Doppler study below image, the uh, lesions adjacent soft, uh, the lesions, the adjacent soft tissue and the periosteum shows increased vascularity. So all these uh, features are uh, features are likely suggestive of the aneurysmal bone cyst. And the other possibility is uh, on chondroma. So we suggest MRI for further evaluation, but uh, uh, Unfortunately, we lost the uh, follow up of the patient. Uh, so coming to uh, so coming to the result, uh, a total of sixteen patients uh, patients were evaluating on the ultra uh, on the ultrasonography. Out of them, the seven seven patient with uh, seven patient was diagnosed or uh, diagnosed osteomy uh, is a osteomyelitis, and four patients are diagnosed as a free fractures. Uh, and other lesions I'm uh, I already demonstrated on the table. So on the uh, uh, graphic representation also shows there is a 
most common lesion in my study is osteomyelitis followed by the rib lesions. Uh, the conclusion of my study is the ultrasonography is helpful Im Im imaging modality for the differentiate uh, the differentiate the diagnosis and the detection of rib lesions like fractures, osteochondroma, uh, acute and chronic osteomyelitis, chest wall lipoma, metastatic lesions, etc. So the ultras ultrasound should be considered when the focal pain is uh, present following even the tribal chest trauma when the radiography is uh, in uh, interpreted as a negative for the fractures. And the high resolution and power Doppler, uh, power Doppler sonography were found to be very uh, sensitive and highly specific in diagnosis of acute osteomyelitis in the pediatric with the clinical suspicious of the disease and the and negative or equivalent uh, plane radiographs. This is my uh, references of the study. Thank you.